Hi guys, this is Ramat and welcome to Best Gaming Settings. Hope you'll enjoy this video. For more updates, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Let's begin our discussion. Today we'll discuss about Spellbreak Classes Guide. Choosing a player class. Spellbreak might be a battle royal, but it is still has the familiar character classes that are present in almost all RPGs. Like most other aspects of the game, the mechanic has gone through some revision to make sense in a battle royal. One of the special thing about Spellbreak is the way they reinvent this standard for the use of this type of game. With Spellbreak classes, the spirit of choosing a discipline has been kept, but has it been made casual enough to not stop battle royal gameplay from getting too dense? Rather than being tied to progression through one character classes, you got to pick classes you play as many times as you'd like in Spellbreak. At the beginning of each game, player can choose two class character classes for the duration of the game. Those are non-binding. Once you start another game, you are free to choose a fresh two classes. This gives you a space to experiment with different spellbreak classes. However, if you want to make the most out of your game, you need to play as the character classes that will be best suit your play style. With spellbreak character classes, you gain ability at the start of the game that can augment your ability. Those bonus are boosted through the game, but from the very beginning, you have access at least two of these passive skills. This can help you start the game already with your state boosted. That's why it is very important to choose the spellbreak classes that best fit your gameplay. Now let's talk about choosing a passive ability from the spellbreak classes. At the beginning of a game in spellbreak, you immediately gain access to two passive abilities. This comes with each of the spellbreak classes. They have different effects but mixing and matching them will give you the best advantage from the very start of the game. Now let's talk about these passive abilities. First one is Bulwark Fortify. If you have any armor, it will regenerate by 5 points every 10 seconds. This ability doesn't really help you until you have finished looting, by which point you have properly got some other runes and abilities to re rely on. This ability is best suited for players who take a lot of damage and find themselves getting into firefight more often than they might fly. Second one is Conduit Lightning First. This will increase your sprint speed by 20%. This doesn't apply when you are attacking or taking damage. It can really be useful in looting faster than other players. Third one is Crackshot Empower. You will do 30% more damage with a single spell. After you have cast a spell, this passive ability won't apply for the next 10 seconds. This is best used with hard hitting gauntlet like Toxic or Frost. The fourth one is Forcebound Cold Snap. Every 30 seconds your over armor is set to 50. This is destroyed when taking any damage. So it can be helpful in protecting you from heavy spell. The fifth one is Pyromancer Phoenix Revert. Once per game, you will resurrect after dying. You will only come back with 50% of your HP. But this is the only second chance you are going to get. Unless you are really confident this passive ability is probably the best in the game. Now the sixth one. Scavenger Finders Keepers. Every chest that you open will contain an extra item. This will helpful for looting but become useless once you're kitted up for the game. This is for players who find themselves take too long to loot. Now the seventh one is Scholar. Update translation. This passive ability is one of the spellbreak classes will decrease the cooldown time of runes by 20%. This is really helpful ability if you know how to utilize the runes in the gameplay properly. Now the number 8 is Scout Foresight. You can see upcoming shrine location before other players. This can really help you get more scrolls. It is best combined with another classes with powerful selectable scrolls. Number 9 is Stone Shaper Shunder. Your target will lose an additional 20% of their armor when you damage them. This one hits hard and help you to do massive damage. It is for those skilled in spell casting and combat. Now the 10th one is Tempest Updraft. You are immune to whirlwind and will launch skyward when entering them. This doesn't apply to any whirlwind that has been combined with another element. This makes it one of the most specialized passive ability of the spellbreak classes. It isn't worth for the most player have hasn't specialized in wind, but this with the wind gauntlet cause it the negative friendly fire and take advantage of their own attack. Now the 11th one is Toxicologist Corrosion. 
every enemy that you hit will lose 5 armor every 5 seconds for 15 seconds. This can help you double up on incremental damage and really chip away at the enemy's health. This class work well for any player who is going for long range combat. Now the 12th one is Zealot Frenzy. Whenever you drop below 35 HP, your damage increases by 35% and your sprint speed increases by 20%. This is the great second chance boost to make you most powerful when you are weakened. Now we will discuss about choosing and pairing the spellbreak classes. While each of the classes has its own specialities that should be considered when choosing a classes. You can pair them based on their passive abilities to ensure you have the best start possible. Doing this can help you get the most out of the spellbreak classes. A powerful pairing is Zealot and Pyromancer. The second chance given you by Pyromancer make the Frenzy Weekend boost of Zealot a lot more useful. With those two combined, an elimination player come back even stronger and faster. Forsight should be combined with any classes that has the most powerful uses locked behind a few scrolls. Stone Shaper is a good example of this. If you find Stone Shaper all or nothing useful, Foresight can help you get to them first. The scavenger is a great utility. Its passive ability can really be pairing with any other. There are deeper aspects to spell break classes and each will require some time to master. While you might not know which class you want to specialize in the first, you should play around with some. This passive ability don't really have enough or an effect for you to base your movement around, but they need to be paired to benefit you or you will be at a disadvantage in spell break. Using the spellbreak classes properly can help you get upper hands and win more games. Hope you enjoyed this video. For more updates, please like, share, comment and subscribe to our channel. If we miss something, please let us know by comment and thanks for watching.